Good evening, lovely listeners, and welcome back to Raven Reads. Really quickly, before we get going, I want to let you guys know once more about Chilling, the awesome horror app that I've been partnered with. In case you haven't heard, every week I have new stories released over on the Chilling app. There are now over a thousand stories on Chilling, with a whole lot of other YouTube narrators and professionals to choose from too. On Chilling, you can do things that you'll never be able to do on YouTube. Choose from over a thousand individual stories that are sorted into curated playlists, or create your own playlist. On Chilling, we give you so much flexibility to listen the way you want. This includes a chilling, game-changing feature, our ambient menu. You can change the background sounds of the story at any time to fit your mood. Go from rain to a campfire with the press of a button. It's totally revolutionary. You've really got to try it. There have been a number of awesome updates to Chilling too, such as the ability to download stories for offline listening and the new social feature. You can now discuss your favorite stories with other users and friends. And we're just getting started. Not only are we adding hours of new content every week, but original video content is also in the works. Chilling is evolving into a must-have for all horror fans. So, if you're ready to check it out, go start your free trial using my personal link in the description below on Chilling. And check out my personal playlist there too. This month, Chilling is also giving away another Xbox Series X bundle. Just leave a review on Google Play or the App Store letting us know what you think. Click the link in the description for more details on how to enter. This month, the bundle includes a Series X console, a second Xbox wireless controller, Resident Evil Village, and Elden Ring. I couldn't be more excited to have the opportunity to be a part of this journey. I hope you'll join us. Download now using my personal link in the description below and start your free trial today. And now, you know what time it is. It's time to get comfortable, grab a beverage of choice, and get ready to take another journey into the night. Despite my experience, I'm still hesitant to use the word haunted. Many people have asked me what I think caused what happened, and I don't have an answer. I can describe it, but I cannot explain it. Therefore, I tend to avoid the usage of words and terms that attempt to explain the phenomenon in any manner. I'm a man of science. I'm not religious or spiritual. However, I cannot simply ignore what happened to me. Here's my story. It was 2009 to 2010. When I met the woman who would later become my wife, we started renting a small house within the city limits. I was in the process of beginning a new job, and circumstances prevented me from staying in the house with her for the first week. Each morning, we would talk on the phone during my drive to work. She explained to me that each morning she had struggled to sleep the previous night. She described sounds that were keeping her awake, like someone running through the house, objects falling off the kitchen counter, doors slamming. After three days, I made arrangements to go ahead and move in with her. I was convinced that somebody was breaking in and harassing her. She was convinced, however, that she was sharing the house with a ghost. I took off work the third day. It took me about eight hours to get everything moved in. I was taking a break on our bed when I felt somebody or something tug on my pant leg. I remained motionless, hoping that it would happen again. After a few seconds, it did happen again, much more aggressively this time. I felt a hand firmly placed on my leg just before it grabbed my jeans and started pulling. She was on the bed next to me, and nobody else was with us. We had no pets, as they weren't allowed. I immediately started having the same experiences throughout the night, as she had described over the phone. It was like somebody was destroying our kitchen, 
but nothing was ever out of place. There was running, as she described, which sounded like a smaller person, perhaps a child. I woke up one night to somebody standing next to my bed. I heard giggling, and then the individual bolted out of the room as I turned my head. It was too dark to notice any features. Over the course of eight months, many unusual things happened. To make a long story short, I'll skip ahead to my last experience, and perhaps the most frightening. I was alone in the house, waiting to join an online seminar. I was sitting on my couch with my laptop on the coffee table ahead of me. I heard the back door slam shut, and a person begin running through the house. These footsteps were heavier, and this person was moving quickly. Given the design of our small house, this person was running in my direction. I shot up and ran out of the house, and I didn't stop until I reached the street, and that's where I remained until my wife returned. As I was standing by the street, I was looking back into the house. A balloon from a recent party made its way from the kitchen into my bedroom, then back into the kitchen moments later. It felt like I was watching somebody search for me, going room to room, all while holding this balloon. This was the last thing that happened to us, and it stopped after that. We continued living there for another four years. I would give anything to experience it again. I would try to be less afraid, and I would approach the situation more analytically. My wife, on the other hand, was never afraid of it. Unfortunately, my wife passed away a few years ago, but I know she would have enjoyed sharing her story. I still drive by that house occasionally, and nobody has ever moved in. When I was in my late teens, early 20s, my dad moved into an old house, one of the oldest left standing in my town. Our town has a rich history with battles and rebellions. Through some research, I figured it was built for an earl back in the day. The house was split into two apartments. When he first moved in, I didn't experience a whole lot, just an overall feeling of strangeness. There was a staircase that led to a solid wall. Hollow walls with no doors going into them. Certain rooms that were just freezing cold. It just always felt as if somebody was watching. After a few months, I experienced the first thing. What I thought was sleep paralysis. I had fallen asleep on the sofa watching TV. I woke up to feel somebody breathing on my cheek. I could clearly hear the breaths right next to me, and I was frozen. After what felt like an hour, I managed to move, and at that exact moment, a distorted face came flying out of the corner toward me before disappearing. Maybe a month after this, I woke up in bed, and I could hear footsteps on the balcony outside my bedroom. I thought maybe somebody was trying to break in. It went on for maybe ten minutes. I didn't investigate, but the next morning I asked my dad if he had heard anything, but he hadn't. We went outside to see if anything was disturbed, and there was a huge handprint, bigger than either of our hands, on the condensation on the balcony door. I freaked out, but my dad played it down. He's a massive skeptic. The next night, he heard somebody on his balcony and ran out to see who it was. As soon as he got outside, all of our bins under the balcony were fallen over, but no one was to be seen. Another day I was in my bedroom. I had a guitar in the corner, and out of the blue it made a noise, as if somebody had strummed the strings. There weren't any windows open, and it wasn't just a breeze or something. I ran, but my dad again tried to explain it away. The next day he was in my room putting away clothes or something, and it happened again. He ignored it, and it happened again. He said something along the lines of, F off, I don't believe in ghosts. 
and he said that it sounded as if somebody hit the guitar. There was a bang and it fell over onto the floor. This was the first time he genuinely couldn't explain away what had happened. I think it actually rattled him a bit. A few weeks later, I got home from work at approximately 4 a.m. Nobody was home. I walked in, turned the three living room lights on and the TV, and turned the hall light on and went into the bathroom. I come back out and looked up from my phone, and all the lights in the living room were off, and the TV, but the hall and bathroom light were still on. I instantly started texting my friend to come get me, when boom, all the lights turned back on, and the TV too, at top volume. I put it down to some electrical issue. I was naturally scared, but I tried to rationalize. Again, I fell asleep on the sofa, and I woke up to the door handle of the sitting room door, slowly turning. It was loud since it was an old house, and I got out of there. It took me a while to go back to the house after that. When I eventually did, I brought a friend to stay the night. We were sitting in the living room, and the neighbor in the other apartment came onto our landing, just outside the door, and started screaming like full belt, high pitched screaming, then just started loudly pacing back and forth on the landing, talking and chanting to himself. We couldn't figure out what he was saying, but it was absolutely terrifying. From speaking to my dad afterwards, he said that the neighbor had just started doing this one night a week or so prior, every single night. Numerous other events have happened my dad's CD player turning itself on, leaving a room to come back and seeing a door that had been closed was now open, things going missing and appearing somewhere else, weird sounds at night. My dad has since moved from there, but everybody that I've talked to that has been in that house has mentioned that they just feel uneasy there, that there was something else there. I don't know, maybe it's all in my head. But I think something legitimate was happening in that house. When I was in the fourth through eighth grade, we moved into a century old farmhouse in Strawtown, Indiana. My father was in and out of the picture at this point in my life, so most of the time it was just me, my mother, and two younger brothers living there. One was only a year younger than I was, and the youngest was zero to four during this time. The house always felt as though somebody was watching you or breathing down your neck. I'm just going to list things that occurred for brevity's sake. Number one, this happened to my mom. She started seeing this black shadow around the house. She said that she could smell him, like the body odor would be smelled in a specific spot, not directly next to it. As time went on, she started seeing the imprint of somebody sitting on the edge of her bed. Then one night, it laid across her legs and she woke up thrashing trying to get it off. Number two, these things happened to me. I had the upstairs bedroom connected to the attic door through a small closet. These were huge rooms. Things were the least crazy for me. I would just hear footsteps run up and down the stairs at night, when my brothers would be in bed. The scariest thing that would happen to me was that often the door to the attic would swing open, as though somebody had forced it, and it would hit the wall then a cold presence would rush to my bedside. When I was 14, I started into a spiraling depression. I painted my walls blood red, and I began to write poetry and things on my walls in this really aggressive handwriting. I have never felt or acted that way since. I have, however, had many instances of paranormal activity that have followed me throughout my life. Number three. One of my brothers had a bad. I only know fragments of his story, as what happened to him is something he'd rather forget. One night he was screaming in his room. 
We checked on him and he had been smacked across the face. We figured it was just him hitting himself in his sleep, but the handprint was upside down. It was impossible that he did it to himself. 15 years later, my mom told me that she found him crying on the stairs one night. He was reluctant to tell her why, but when pressed, he told her that he kept hearing voices telling him to kill all of us. My mom understandably kept this from us. When I asked him about it, he was visibly upset and said that it stopped as soon as we moved from the house and he didn't want to talk about it. My youngest brother was two to three when he started saying weird stuff. He would talk about the boots walking around the house with no body attached. He'd also hear laughing whenever he would get near the basement steps. I remember the four of us kneeling and praying that this entity would leave us alone, but it didn't. We decided to leave after a morning when my mom and youngest brother were home alone. They were taking a nap. When the bed and dresser started violently shaking, there was no earthquake and no reason for it. They shook by themselves, and my mom described it as feeling as though she was being intimidated. We moved out. We were told by a neighbor that everybody that's ever moved into that house has moved out within a few months. It's empty now. I still drive by it, and I want to go confront whatever's there and get answers. The landlord is an old farmer that doesn't believe us. This has been the first time I've ever talked about it, really, at least publicly. Since I've moved on with my life, I've lived in several different houses. I've heard strange noises of objects moving in other rooms and deliberate knocking. Not super frequently, though. In one house, we had a painting of Delight Yourself in the Name of the Lord up in the dining room. We heard this crash one night and found it five feet to the right, blocking the bathroom entrance. We also could hear razors and shampoo bottles being tossed in the bathroom at that house. In another, I had two friends over playing poker in the kitchen. And as we were talking about a shelf that had come off the wall the night before, a plastic blender cup was chucked out of the pantry behind us and bounced off that exact wall. I don't know if something followed me from that house or if it's related at all, but it's been interesting. Some years ago, my girlfriend and I were asked to watch somebody's house. They had an old sick dog and they wanted to go on a vacation. I had to study for exams, so I figured it would be a nice, calm place to do that. We were about 22 or 23 years old. The first day that we came in, we got some information about the house. Their kids slept downstairs, so we had to sleep upstairs in the loft. We had this hallway and then a door to the playroom, and then another door to the loft. So just one way in and one way out. The bathroom was downstairs next to the kids' room. The first thing that I didn't really like was a picture of their dead grandpa standing next to me on the drawer near the bed. I put him away in the drawer so I didn't have to see him every time I woke up. The evening came and we were searching for plates to eat. We couldn't find any plates, we checked the kitchen, yes, every drawer, like five times, nothing to see. The next day, the first drawer I opened in the kitchen was full of plates. Kind of weird, but all right. The next night, the dog was barking like crazy. Every night, this dog started to bark at random hours. The next morning, random lights would be on all over the house. Then I went to check the aquarium to give some food to the fish there. Half of them were dead skeletons at the bottom. I mean, what the heck? Even if they had died overnight, there's no way that would happen so fast. She said there's gotta be an explanation for this kind of thing, but we were already a little bit freaked out. The next night, we're going to the bathroom and just getting ready to go to sleep. Like every night, my girlfriend put her handbag and stuff in the kids' room because the cats couldn't get in there. We checked to make sure all the lights were out and we went to sleep. 
The next morning, the handbag was standing right next to the bed, right in front of the doorway. My girlfriend freaked out, and for me, that was it. I said I didn't want to stay. We had exams coming up, and I didn't want to deal with that stuff anymore. She stayed for the dog, but didn't want to sleep alone anymore, so her mom came to sleep at the house. After that, nothing more happened. We told the owners of the house, but they laughed really hard, and I think they thought we were either crazy or kidding. They said nothing like that has ever happened to them. I don't know, maybe I pissed off Grandpa because I put him in a drawer. But, regardless, we really felt that somebody was messing with us in that house. I bought the house that I'm living in a few years ago. It was recently renovated by the previous owner, who was in his 50s. I found out later, after talking to a neighbor, that the previous owner had passed away from sudden heart problems. Weird things have been happening again lately. The main thing is the fire alarms. There are about four or five smoke detectors dispersed around the house. One of them will go off randomly, at like three in the morning, but it's a different one each time, and it's only ever one. Sometimes it's the basement one. Last night, it was the one in the guest bedroom. This has happened probably 10 times in the last two years. The smoke alarms will just go off for a minute, and then they'll just stop. I've checked the batteries, I've checked if it's the carbon monoxide alarm, everything, but nothing is wrong with them. They'll just randomly go off. But last night, it did something unusual. Usually, it's just a really loud beeping alarm. But last night, in between the beeps, it said, fire, fire, fire. That has never happened before. And I'm not even sure those alarms are programmed to do that. Some other things that I've had happen is that the lights will dim the lamp will turn off and on by itself, and I've heard whistling that I can never find a source for. The fire alarm thing sucks, and it's very startling at 3 a.m. I'm not entirely sure, but I think I might be living in a haunted house. I wanted to share some stories about my family's haunted house, so here goes. I'm 19 and I still live with my parents, along with my little sister, who's 14, and my little brother, who's 17. Many, many things have happened in this house, and it's gotten to the point where I feel safer at my boyfriend's house. We got this house when I was around 11. I would cry to my mom almost every night after getting out of the shower because while I would shower, I would hear somebody talking to me from the other side of the curtain. It got so bad that I eventually made my mom stay in the bathroom with me while I showered. A couple of years go by and nothing happens. When I started high school, that's when things started happening again, but worse. I would often hear things. Things would move around by themselves and nothing would ever be in the same spot where I had left it before. I told my parents about this, but they thought I was crazy for like two years. Then, things started happening to them as well. One morning, I woke up with a burning sensation on my leg. I had three upside down K shapes scratched into my leg. At first I thought maybe somehow I had done it in my sleep, but they were perfectly aligned. Plus, at that time I chewed on my nails, so I didn't really have any nails to scratch myself with. About two years ago, my little sister comes running into my room at 3.30, shaking. Once she got me awake, she told me that my mom was screaming. I go into her room and she's hysterical, crying her eyes out, with the covers pulled all the way over her head, and my dad comforting her. My mom is shaking and she's so scared she couldn't even talk. My dad left for work that morning, around 4, 
and my mom couldn't sleep unless she had me in there with her. For days, she refused to tell me what happened, but then she finally did. She said that she had woken up and saw a rather short black silhouette standing next to my dad. She said the figure was all black, but she could feel how evil it was, and it had a sort of red-orange glow behind it. She was so scared, she wouldn't let me leave her alone in the house. In 2020, I met my boyfriend, and I had him over to the house for the first time. He ended up staying the night, but I didn't tell him about my house in fear of scaring him off. It's around two in the morning and my parents are asleep. My brother is at a friend's house and my little sister is in the dining room, painting. My boyfriend and I are in the brother's room because he has a PlayStation. I don't. I'm playing a game and he's watching me play, and I look over and he's not really paying attention. He's looking into the living room, and he looks very pale. I asked him if he was okay, what was wrong, and if he was feeling all right. Finally, I started shaking him because he wouldn't reply. Then he said, who's that standing in front of your parents' room? This freaked me out because I looked and nothing was there. I asked him to describe what he had seen. He said he was looking at exactly what my mom had said she saw a couple of years prior. A couple of months later, my boyfriend is in my room by himself, and my parents are outside on the porch talking. I go in to get him to come outside and go on a walk with us, but when I walk into my room, he's under the covers, and my nightstand is completely upside down. He's pale and shaking, and I ask him what happened. He explained he was on his phone waiting for me to come back, when everything on my nightstand flew off and then flipped over. I had glass bottles and a couple of miniature paintings on my nightstand, and there was broken glass everywhere. This was a couple of months after we got together, but there's so much more I could tell. It's already such a long story, but the point is, I don't feel safe here, and I don't know what to do or who to turn to. I don't know what's in my house, but it is definitely not friendly. I've dealt with the paranormal side ever since I can remember, but this is the story that happened in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. My wife and I moved in sometime in September of 2014. We bought the home at auction and it needed a lot of work. The home was built in 1969 and it was all original to that date, even down to the shag carpets. The house sat on 12 acres with only three acres cleared around the home other than some random trees. The rest was fully wooded. The basement was gross and musty. The ceilings were low in places with the pipes and ductwork running throughout. It had an odd feeling when walking down there. The previous owners left a deep freezer and what they had inside of it made me question the things they were doing in the basement. The freezer was full of different animal carcasses that had been stripped of meat random bone pieces with bits of fur still attached. There was also a gallon bucket sitting in there, just full of blood. Our very first night staying there, my brother and sister decided to stay over with us. We were all hanging out anyway, and it got late, so they just decided to stay. While we were there, we were unpacking boxes and decorating for Halloween. I started walking the empty boxes and totes down to the basement. And while down there, something caught my eye. I saw what looked like a slim box sitting on top of the ductwork. I walked over and pulled the box down. And sure enough, it was an old 70s Ouija board. Not thinking too much about it, I grabbed it and brought it upstairs and sat it in our dining room hutch for decoration. The night was getting late. We were all getting tired. It had to have been around midnight. We decided to head up to the second floor and go to bed. All the bedrooms were dispersed on the second floor. My wife and I took the master bedroom and my brother and sister took rooms of their own. 
We laid there trying to doze off, when suddenly we heard what sounded like the closet doors sliding and slamming shut, and the sound of running and stomping back and forth in the hallway. My wife had me get up to tell my brother and sister to stop and that we were trying to sleep. I get up and I go to each of their rooms and I ask what they're doing and that people are trying to sleep. They said, we thought it was you guys. I decided to grab my gun thinking, okay, maybe somebody broke into the house. I slowly walked downstairs, clearing each room as I went along. My wife, brother, and sister followed behind with a gun of their own. We cleared every room, but there was no one in the house. Suddenly, it dawns on my sister. It's the Ouija board, she said. I quickly grabbed it from the hutch cabinet and took it back to the basement, and it was silent for the rest of the night. As time went on, the spirit was making itself known. We would have to block the basement door shut because we were constantly finding it open. Anytime we had to go down into the basement, we felt its presence. This thing was demonic. We would hear it walk up to the second floor and walk around the bedrooms. Doors would randomly slam shut. The lights would surge randomly. I began to see this dark shadow figure. It wasn't just any spirit. It was dark. Like I said, it felt demonic. I felt like I was losing my mind. Voices were constantly in my head. Sometimes they were whispers, other times they were louder, but they always sounded muffled. I couldn't ever make out what they were saying, but it was all the time. The only time the voices weren't in my head was when I wasn't home. We had chickens and a sheep that died for no reason. All of our vehicles constantly had problems, down to the mower. One day I was putting laundry away. I had the windows open to catch a summer breeze because our HVAC didn't work very well. And I heard a strange sound. So I looked to the window and listened. It was coming from the right side, inside the woods. It got closer and closer. And then that's when I saw it. It was either a hellhound or a werewolf or something like that, walking through our front yard and disappearing into the woods on the other side. I was so shocked. One random night, we were watching a movie. The light surged and we heard the basement door slowly opening. I jumped up and wedged the door shut with a chair. Another night, I walked past the basement door to find it open, with no lights on, and I heard my wife down there calling my name. I thought it was really strange. Something just seemed wrong about it, so I didn't go down there. Then, I heard walking above me. Slowly, I walked up the stairs to the second floor, and I made my way up them. When I turned the corner, I found my wife in our room. She was the one that was walking upstairs while I was hearing her call me from the basement. I told her about this, and we both thought it was really wild. I mean, what did it want me in the basement for? The presence continued, and it was making us feel on edge. Tired, I was hardly sleeping. I tossed and turned, and the voices grew louder and louder. Yet I could never make out what they were saying. After a few years, we decided to put the house up for sale. My father-in-law was coming over to help work on a few things before the house hit the market. While he was there, the door slammed shut, and the voices started in his head. He even said that he couldn't make out what they were saying. Eventually, we moved out, and the voices, which had never been present before that house, went away entirely, and have never come back since. We bought a house intending to use it as our second home, but after just a few months, we decided to sell it after some unusual experiences. Long story short, we're pretty sure it's haunted. Our real estate salesperson and the person who bought the home are both aware of the claims, 
and have made an informed decision to purchase it anyway. They probably think I'm nuts. The home is not an old one. It was built in 2019, and we are the third owners. We've gotten an air quality test done in the home, and both my husband and I have both received physical examinations. Nothing is out of the ordinary. We bought our winter home last year. Originally, we're from Canada, but we've spent the majority of the last couple of years between the United States and, more recently, Costa Rica. My first experience there was while I was taking a shower. The house has an ensuite washroom. When you enter the room, if you go to the left, you'll go toward the bathroom. If you go to the right, you'll end up in the bedroom. From the shower, you can see the entrance to the bedroom. One afternoon, while I was showering, I watched my husband walk into the bedroom with a glass of lemonade. I then turned around to wash the soap off my face and turned back toward the door to rinse the shampoo out of my hair. That's when I saw my husband enter the room again with the same glass of lemonade. When I exited the shower, I asked him if he had re-entered the room a couple of times, and he said no. He'd only ever come into the bedroom once and that he'd been there the majority of my shower. My husband had a similar experience. He was in the backyard looking into the kitchen. He claimed that he saw me leave the kitchen and walk toward the mudroom. He was very confused when he entered the house to find it empty. I had been out for a couple of hours. On multiple occasions, I've heard the sound of my husband's car scraping on the driveway. We have the steepest driveway on the block. And every time he parks the car, you can hear this distinct dragging sound of metal on the driveway. Whenever I hear this, I usually unlock the garage door. There have been multiple times where I've heard this sound, unlocked the door, and he isn't home. We've both heard whistling sounds that we can't explain, that stop once we acknowledge it. I guess it could just be the vents, but for the last three weeks, our thermostat hasn't been working, and we still hear it. There have been other trivial occurrences. Once I woke up in the middle of the night because the fridge door alarm was going off. We also have one of those annoying automatic toilets where the lid lifts when it detects motion. Well, those keep going off on their own too and opening up. I understand that with modern upgrades, there are going to be some malfunctions. So I put those experiences under the questionable category, but there have still been quite a lot of them. We've spent the past week packing our things. We're one of those people that just don't store anything in the garage other than our vehicles. The only other thing that we have in there is the water softener tank and that's it. So one night the car alarm goes off on both vehicles. Convinced that we're being robbed, we call the police and of course, the neighborhood security also comes by just to see that our cars are perfectly in the garage with no signs of an intruder. We officially moved out of that house three days before closing. We couldn't bear another day there. The neighbor texted me to ask what all the commotion was at our house. I told her that I had no idea what she was talking about because we don't even live there. I know this sounds insane, but we have lived in so many houses and we've never experienced anything like this. Even though our house was built in 2019, it was a teardown. There was another house on the same property that was built somewhere in the 60s, I think. So who knows what we might have inherited from that. 